A lot of us are ready to combat, to combat against these large issues, but a lot of the times we find unrealistic and ways uh, to combat these actual things. I was saying, could we have some tips and effective ways to combat against Islamophobia, against all these issues, but in a way that we can, using our voices and that the fact that we're younger than the rest of the people. Thank you very much for that. I, I would. That's a whole presentation in, of, in and of itself. But to summarize a couple of things. Number one, we heard about bullies early on in one of the early presentations. One of the most important pieces of research uh, on the subject of getting people to stand up was a series of experiments run by a guy named Milgram. And he was looking to figure out how do you take nice people like the Germans and get the Nazis. Mm -hmm. And the experiments are very well known. You have somebody go into a room, they think they're going to administer a vocabulary test to a person, and if the person misspells a word, you're supposed to give them a slight electric shock. And the person is an actor, they're not really getting shocked, but as they misspell more words, you increase it more and more, and there's a person standing behind you, a fake authority figure, who will push you so that when the actor is misspelling words and screaming in pain saying, please stop, the fake authority figure says, you have to continue, you keep going. And what they found is just about every, you know, or excuse me, a large percentage of people will go ahead and electrocute someone to death just purely because some authority figure is saying, keep going. Here's the point for young people. Mm -hmm. They did a variation on the experiment where they inserted a second actor who, when it started going too far, stood up and said, no, we're not going to do this. And almost 100% of people stopped. So as someone who, in your social circles, if you hear any form of prejudice, be the one who says stop. Because people are sitting around waiting for somebody to take that lead. And I guarantee you folks, it's easy to talk about doing in this room. It can be terrifying in the actual moment because you are taking a risk. But if you start taking those risks now, I guarantee you the respect that comes toward you is amazing. And the impact that you can have on the situation at the local level is also amazing. Part, that's part one. Part two, the second most important thing you can do, parents, close your ears for a second. You don't need to be a doctor or an engineer. Go into public service, become a journalist, work on congressional campaigns, all the different things from which Muslims are far too often missing nowadays because I think it was Hatem that mentioned it, too often in politics, we are not at the table, we are on the menu. The way you get to the table is by being in these public service professions. So if you're getting ready to go to college or you're in college, consider those career tracks. Just in defending uh, Corey, let me give you, I have 800 Muslim students at UC Berkeley. 98%, uh, maybe 99% are all either studying MCB, Miracle and Cell Biology, EECS, Electronic Engineering and Computer Science, right? <laughs> And I have literally maybe two that are studying Islamic studies, one mm -hmm. studying journalism, one in English uh, in literature, and possibly two in the PhD that are doing a uh, graduate, graduate program in history. So what we have is what I call the, the, the Muslim DNA marker, MD, DNA, MD, in, and engineer. And uh, then we could design the computer, but we don't have people that could write in it. Right? Mm -hmm. We could design the instruments for medicine and be the doctors, but we have no capacity beyond that. So at one point, we have some natural right, distribution that we need to get in this country in order for us to begin to have an impact on policies that impacts the engineer and the doctor without their ability to actually alter the demographics that we're dealing with. 